Hello, I'm Jess Ketterer. And I'm Byron Ruff. We're back with the 2018 winter edition of the Heightstown High School Ram Report. <music> On today's show, we take a look at the winter play. We join Mr. Wexler's AP government class as they take a trip to DC. Watch the wrestling team tackle their way to victory against South. And students get to learn about anatomy in the new dual enrollment class. All this and more on the Heightstown High School Ram Report. With the start of the new school year, Heightstown High School has partnered with Mercer County Community College to offer students the chance to take dual enrollment anatomy and physiology. With the help of Dr. Klein, this intensive course is becoming very popular among students. Here for more on this new addition to our curriculum is Denise Quintanilla. Dr. Klein is always encouraging students to take on the challenge of anatomy and physiology. I love anatomy because it's about everybody and it demystifies all of the things that happen inside your body. Dual enrollment courses offer students an opportunity to take on a college course while still being in high school. Heightstown allows students to take these courses in Spanish, English, world history, and now anatomy and physiology. Teacher Dr. Klein has much experience in this field of study and gives us a closer perspective on the different aspects of this course. Dual enrollment anatomy is the exact same class that is offered at Mercer County Community College. It's Bio 103 and 104. To many, this course can be challenging to take if you don't put in any effort to learn the material. However, the students that are currently enrolled have decided to take up this difficult task. Well, the class is very fast-paced. We cover quite a bit of material in a relatively short amount of time, so students really have to keep up. Otherwise, they'll really fall behind and it'll be difficult to catch up again. Although this course may seem difficult to some students, there are definitely benefits when taking this class, and you can count on the support coming from DK along the way. Um, what it takes to being successful in this class is definitely studying, uh, asking for help, and being determined to get a good grade. This class really prepares you for classes for sciences in university because once in a while we do like labs where we learn about the bones and the landmarks of the bone and we're able to touch them. I think the activity I'm most excited for is the cat dissection at the end of the school year. That's the most intense um, dissection we have in the year. We start off small, we do like the cow eyeball, then sheep brain, pig heart, but I'm really excited for the cat. It should be fun. It's challenging but rewarding at the same time because you know that at this level, if you can succeed, then you know you can succeed in college. This year, the Ram Report was granted the opportunity to speak directly with the president of Mercer County Community College, Dr. Jean Ping Wong. What are dual enrollment courses? Dual enrollment courses, as the name suggests, that a student is enrolled at a high school course at the same time at a college course. So that's why you get the name dual enrolled courses. How did the credits transfer from high school to college? The credits ha bear both the high school uh, name as well as the college name. So because it bears the college's name on it, it's easily accepted when you continue with the college you took credits from as well as to other colleges in the state of New Jersey because you have a Lampet law that it guarantees college credits transfer to other state institutions. What are the benefits that these courses offer to students? When you duly enroll in a college credit course, you pay a small amount. It's a one third roughly of the college cost. So if you earn your college credits while in high school for one third of the cost, you know, you save money. Dual enrollment classes can be a rewarding experience for anyone who has the drive and motivation to take these courses. President Wong highly encourages high school students to consider dual enrollment even if it means it's going to be challenging. If the college wants to make the door wide open for everyone and anyone who dreams to get a college education, then it becomes my job, my obligation to promote dual enrollment as a college president, to really, really educate everyone out there who's willing to listen. Try this out. This is really, really good for everyone. Thanks, Denise. Isn't it wonderful that students can get a college experience right here in high school? It sure is. 
Meanwhile, the Drama Club took on the role of recreating the high school experience with their production of Up to Down Staircase. Here's Jasmine with the story. This town's drama teacher, Mr. Olson, is known for steering away from the traditional high school shows. With the controversial year in town and his steampunk take of a Midsummer's Night Dream already under his belt, we expected nothing less than a unique show. Up to Down Staircase takes an uncommon look at a high school life, but from a teacher's perspective. The show is about a new teacher named Sylvia Barrett, who is in an inner city school as her first year. She's uh, trying to make a change, a difference, into this troubled district. She's very hopeful, thinking that she's going to change everybody's lives, but the show is mostly about her going up the down staircase, her uphill battle with the system and the students. And that's why I want to teach. That's probably the one and only compensation to make a permanent difference in the life of a child. I believe the show is completely relevant today. Um, there are restrictions placed upon teachers when trying to help their students and deal with their students and, and things that teachers face on a daily basis that we like to call our struggle uh, in, in trying to reach our modern day students. Ram Report's own Jess Cutter plays the lead role of Sylvia Barrett and is thrilled to have her first big role. Sometimes I find it hard becoming a character just because I'm so used to just reading the lines off the script instead of actually communicating with the other actors on stage. I haven't played a big role in all my three years of doing theater, so it feels very rewarding knowing that all my hard work has paid off to this moment. Mr. Olson hopes that all the other actors realize that they will learn to embrace every experience just as Jess did. What I hope the actors will learn, um, that they can branch out and try different things. We haven't done a play like this here at Heightstown before. Um, we have a couple of students who are playing roles that they are constantly surprised that they're actually playing. It completely veers away from what they normally would play. They can take me in this bold, strong embrace. One student who stretched her skills beyond what she was used to was Reagan McKenna, who played a troubled student, Alice Blake. The most challenging part was probably pretending to, to cry on stage, because I just, I don't usually cry. So I had to like kind of make myself more vulnerable in that sense. The cast also had a unique experience with each other this year. Cast vibe was uh, really great, actually. Uh, since I'm new to theater, everyone was, was like really welcoming, and uh, I just I was able to fit right in with the rest of them. I felt that everybody loved each other through and through, and we are just one huge family. And I know that I built friendships that will last a lifetime. Up to Down Staircase is an educational experience succeeded in being an excellent learning opportunity for the casting crew. We look forward to seeing Pippin, our spring musical. I'm Jasmine Rose, signing off. Thanks, Jasmine. The cast also took Up to Down Staircase to the New Jersey Thespian Festival held at Robbinsville High School. Congratulations to Taj Linton and Reagan McKenna for their second place awards as Best Supporting Actor and Actress. We are excited to see what the drama department has in store for us next year. More drama unfolded in the track and wrestling season this winter. Next, we'll go to our world-renowned sports anchor, Sudhan Van Murthy. Sports with Sun! Welcome back, Heightstown, to the 2018 edition of Sports with Sud. We, The winter wrestling season has started, and it's an exciting time for Heightstown's two hotshots, Johnny Andre and Kristen Chirosh, who are looking to break Heightstown school records in wrestling. For more on the story, here's my boy, Michael Ordo. It's an exciting time as the winter wrestling season kicks off here at Heightstown. Our two star wrestlers, Johnny Andre and Christian Chirosh, are looking to break school records before their high school wrestling careers end. The head wrestling coach, Mr. Russo, is excited about kicking off the 2018 season. I mean, we got two guys that are having outstanding careers. Johnny Andre's got 82 career wins. Um, the record is 106, and he had 37 last year. So if he just does what he does last year, he's gonna break the school record by a good amount. And Christian Shirash has 73 wins. So we've only had two guys ever in the history of the program, and now we have two guys on the same team in the same year that are shooting for the same goal. Mr. Russo has been the head coach for quite some time. He's seen many great wrestlers come and go and is excited to see how the program has grown. We've grown. Uh, the program, uh, this is 
my 19th year now as the head coach here. Um, I remember taking over, and again, I, I was a wrestler here, so when I got back, graduated college, uh, the program opened up. There was a head coach spot, and I remember having maybe like 14, 15 kids in the whole program. So now we're at 42 kids still with us right now. So we've, done, we've grown in numbers. Uh, we've grown in championships. We've won the CVC seven times in that span. Um, but we're also trying to, like I said, try to be the best team. Johnny's already a veteran wrestler with a strong career that began in the halls of Kreps. And what is now his final year as a high school wrestler, Johnny's ready to make his mark on the Rams record boards. What I'm hoping is to um, make it to states in Atlantic City this year and get top five in the state for the 182 weight class. I don't hold any records at the moment, but I'm looking to break the wins record. Christian Shirach is also having an outstanding wrestling career. He has high hopes for his senior year. So my hopes for this year is to break 100 wins. So for this season, I need 27 wins to get a 100 wins career. Um, last year, I got 30. So as long as I do as, at least as good as I did last year, I'll get 100 wins. Christian and Johnny both know who their top rival school is. Toughest school to beat in the CBC, um, Hopewell. That's like one of the top schools, but. At least just in recent years, they've been um, the Mercer County champs. Um, but I think, well, they've lost a lot of seniors last year. I mean, they still have a, a good young team, um, along with Allentown, but. I feel like we could beat them if everybody on our team like was to wrestle their hardest and, you know, wrestle smart. Although Hopewell will prove a challenge, Heightstown really got to display their true colors at the match versus High School South. Let's take a look. Christian Shirash was more of a viper than a wrestler in the first round of his match. After feeling his opponent out, Christian delivered a lightning quick strike that brought his adversary to the ground. He was close to a pin from the get-go. Although in control, Christian struggled to get the pin on his opponent for the next couple of rounds. He finished strong, however, with a win for Heightstown. Johnny started the first round strong with a clearly visible upper hand to his opponent. He showcased his agility and skill with a variety of holds and well-played footwork. Although struggling slightly at the start of round two, Johnny was able to regain control with the help of inspiring cheers from Coach Russo and many onlookers. Although he was not able to flip his opponent to his back, it was evident that Johnny would be staying on the right side up for the remainder of the match. Round three is where Johnny really came to shine, immediately bringing his opponent to the ground and initiating a pin. While it was another win for Heightstown, it was win number 100 for Johnny. Congratulations. We're proud to say that Johnny Andre was able to break his record of 100 wins. It was a well-deserved victory. Now it's time to see if Christian Shirash can do the same thing. On behalf of the Ram Report, we wish the wrestling team the best of luck during their 2018 season. I'm Michael Lordahl, signing off. This just in. Johnny Andre broke the school's record in career wins of 106. Nice job, Johnny, and good luck to you, Christian. We wish you the best of luck as you go on to compete for a spot in Atlantic City. Now let's take a look at the girls' winter track story with our main man, Kyle Dorothy. The girls' winter track have been working like no other team, and with a relatively new coach out on the track, it shows the dedication to work from both the players and the coach. We asked Ms. Biondi on what she does to get the players ready for the meet. So on, on the distance side of things, it's mainly just making sure their endurance is built up and, and knowing that they can't come out too fast or else they're going to burn out too quickly. And then our sprint side of things, it's just making sure they start properly. That's, that's a huge thing that they have to understand how to do and do it properly to, to gain an edge on their opponent. You can teach good starts. You can train for endurance. But getting along, that's just something Heightstown does really well. It's, it's neat to see because we have both boys and girls interacting every single day at practices, at meets, um, and it's a lot of downtime between races, so they, have, they don't have to, but they do get along, fortunately, and uh, it's, it's a really good 
group of kids to have to be involved with this program and they're very dedicated and very committed and very disciplined and and are, are, are great towards one another. Since Miss Biondi has been head coach she's been able to really study the runners and pick out a few that are looking to really compete highly this year. We have Samira Vanderlaan who is our by far our t one of our top performers and, and earning points for our program. Um, Fenway again and then Anna Trancozo. Also on the distance side of things, we've had Jackie Matson come back, or senior Jackie Matson. She's been a, a pretty consistent middle distance runner for us, mainly running in like the 8 and 1600 races. Highstown is not the only school with good runners and throwers. They will face some strong competition this year within their conference. With a late 7 o'clock race, Highstown did not show any signs of being tired or slowing down. The Highstown girls did really good on the 400 meter dash. With Highstown starting out with a good lead and our two runners were out in front. Upon the second lap, Highstown was still looking strong for those two top spots. But at the very last moment, a Hamilton West runner had pushed for that last second and overcame second. Highstown runners managed to obtain the first and third spot in the race. In the second 400 meter dash, there were three Highstown runners starting out strong with the first, second, and third spots filled. During the first lap, two Lawrence runners pushed themselves to their third and fourth spot but our, second, but our two runners were still out in the lead. By the second lap, it was a race for the finish with Lawrence and Heightstown both going at it for that first spot. It was a photo finish as Heightstown pulled ahead at the last second and secured the first spot. The 800 meter run started off with West Windsor in the first three spots and Heightstown started out in the back of the pack. The race stayed pretty much consistent within the place of the runners but Lawrence was able to pull out in front and win the race. All three West Windsor racers took the following positions and Heightstown managed to secure positions 7th and 10th. The 1600 meter dash with Caitlin Yang being our best hope. Off the block, three West Windsor racers were out in the lead and Caitlin was trailing behind in 5th place. After the first lap around Caitlin was shuffled back to 6th but was still running strong. But by a third lap she had obtained the 5th spot. Caitlin managed to obtain her speed throughout the race in the runner's place with three West Windsor racers out in the top three with Nottingham in four and Caitlin in the fifth spot. How do you feel about your performance of tonight's game? I think I did good. I think there's all this room for improvement, but overall I think I did pretty well. After graduation, do you plan on continuing track in college? I don't plan on continuing. What friendships have you had on a team, and whom do you think has helped a lot on the field? Um, well, I think like all the girls, the distance girls team isn't really that big, so there aren't that many girls on the team in general. So I think really everyone has helped, and we really all kind of like uplift and support each other. And what have you been doing in the off season to prepare yourself for this upcoming season? Um, I run in the off, like during off season, and then during spring track, like I do like body weight workouts. Or And what are your goals and expectations as an individual this season? Um, bro, so by the end of the season, I would really like to compete in sectionals, maybe in the 32, um, 100 meter, or the, six, the 1600 meter. Um, but I really just, overall, I want to be better. Thank you, Kyle. Also, congratulations to Jamal Anderson for scoring 1,000 career points in basketball. Well, that's it for this edition of Sports with Soot. Be on the lookout for more sports stories coming up in Heightstown. This is Sud Murthy at the Ramport, signing off. Back to you, Jess. Thanks, Sud, for the great sports update. Congratulations to the wrestling team, and we wish our track team the best of luck. Another hardworking group with victory in its sights is Mr. Wexler's AP Government and Politics class. Since 2014, Mr. Wexler's AP Government class here at Heightstown High School has been working on the Cold Case Records Collection Act of 2017. By working to get this bill passed through Congress, the students get an opportunity to have hands-on experience of the inner workings of the government. But what exactly does this entail? Going through the entire legislative process from crafting a bill to lobbying for it, to introducing it, to uh, publicizing it in the media. And that stemmed from the fact that I felt as if my interest in civil rights cold cases, that those cold cases represented a bipartisan undertaking that I wasn't, wouldn't be forcing any of the students in the class to, 
to go against their political convictions or their ideological convictions. The bill has made a lot of progress since it was first drafted. This is now the third straight AP U.S. government and politics class who has been working on this bill. That's how long we've been at this game. The bill will create an independent review board to facilitate the release of records that the government currently has in its position on civil rights hold cases. Many of these cases are unresolved even 50 years, 60 years after the fact. And while it's also hopeful that the families may get justice, there's simply the matter of getting information out that maybe helps get them a little bit more closure to the extent that closure is even possible. On December 4th, 2017, Mr. Wexler, along with the students, even took a trip to Washington, D.C. to try to convince Congress people to put their support behind the bill. Yeah, I had a couple different meetings with different um, staffers, and I think the most important meeting was with the committee where the bill currently fits. Zabir Rahman was a student in Mr. Wexler's AP Gov class last year, and he continues to work on the bill today. Uh, the most important thing I think we got done there is getting the attention of the committee, because the bill lives in the committee, and if it doesn't pass the committee, then it's done, and that's the most important step to us. I hope that we will achieve some measure of breaking the inertia. The hope is, is that through lobbying, the students will push the bill through the committee in the House and get it introduced in the Senate. To get the bill introduced into the Senate, Mr. Wexler is currently trying to contact Doug Jones, who recently won the special Alabama Senate race, and who promised earlier that he would introduce the bill into the Senate. Although the trip has passed, the students are still lobbying for support. And currently right now, what I'm doing is I'm calling different interest groups and uh, people who could help us with that effort to go to D.C. and lobby for the bill, try to get different congressmen on board, and try to spread the word about the bill within uh, congressmen. Zabir and the other AP government students are doing whatever they can to finally pass the bill through Congress and onto the desk of a president to be signed. Good luck, Heightstown. From the Mayor Report, I'm Sarah Rotman, signing off. Thanks, Sarah. We'll keep a lookout for the bill and any progress it makes. In movie news, Star Wars Episode Eight hit theaters last month. The film received mixed reviews. Here's what our fellow students thought of the movie. The newest installment of the Star Wars franchise hit theaters this winter on Friday, December 15th. After the smashing success of The Force Awakens in 2015, fans have been eagerly waiting for the new movie for two years. The students here at Heightstown are members of this ever-growing fan base and have a lot to say about the new movie. So I went, I went with my friends, and the first hour and a half was just dialogue, so I kind of got bored, so I just slept. And my friends told me that afterwards that there was a lot of action after, but I slept through it, so I was like, whatever, it's fine. Um, not going to lie, I thought the beginning was pretty boring. I actually fell asleep for like five minutes, but the ending was, it was pretty good. Like I like the action at the end, so not bad. I thought it was a good movie. Why? Because of all the lightsabers and the action. Yeah, it was, it was captivating. I was a big fan of it. I liked, I liked a lot of it, you know, the, the plot lines, what it was going for, it was kind of sets up for the next movie. Uh, a couple of those scenes were really cool. I was ready for some of those uh, fight scenes. It was good stuff. It wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great. I felt like the movie didn't really need to be made. It didn't advance the plot from The Force Awakens. Okay, great, thank you. Awesome, thank you so much. Ryan Johnson's episode nine took many risks. Whether they paid off or not is up to the fans. The film has received mixed reviews, but that was expected. The film left us with many unanswered questions. Will Luke return in episode nine? What will happen to Leia? Is Kylo going to turn to the light side? Are Finn and Rose a thing now? Will Han Solo return? How do I get ripped like Kylo Ren? We'll see if Episode 9 takes as many risks as Episode 8 did, or if it'll play it safe like The Force Awakens. Heightstown students are eagerly waiting for the final installment in the trilogy. For The Rain Report, I'm Byron Ruff. Well, that's all for the winter edition of The Rain Report. We'll see you in the spring. I'm Jess Ketterer. And I'm Byron Ruff, signing off. Tune in next time to the Heightstown High School Ram Report.